Uh, I like to say that it started with uh, two ideas, actually. One really serious idea and one fairly stupid idea. And the serious idea is about information overload, about how the world is already a really noisy place that you can't go anywhere without being forced to listen to someone on their mobile phone or your phone going off with texts or people trying to get your attention on the internet. And I thought, well, what if you couldn't get away? What if you really couldn't get away? What if there was no escape? and there was no privacy at all. And I thought, what if in particular you were young and had no privacy? Because if you think about it, young people these days have the least amount of privacy that anyone has ever had in the history of the Western world. And so I thought, well, that's, that's an interesting, interesting story. And that was a serious idea. And the stupid idea was that I really, really hate books about uh, talking dogs. And so I thought, they, they never actually talk like dogs. I think dogs would actually talk. So I thought it wouldn't be funny if I could have a real dog character who spoke, but who spoke like an actual dog might. Uh, and so just a serious idea and a silly idea, and they actually kind of worked together as a surprise, and so um, I was off and running. I always knew it was going to be a trilogy, actually, from before I even wrote the first sentence, and I thought, well, um, publishing books is such a privilege. I mean, it really is. Every time, every time I write a book, you know, I always treat it like it might be the last time. And so when I had this idea, I thought, why not really go for it? Why not really dream big? And I, I knew that it would be a trilogy from the start. It's how I talked to the publishers about it. I knew the first book would be about um, flight, about running. And the second book would be about tyranny. And I always knew that the third book would be about war. Uh, and so I knew from the very, very start that um, it was a big canvas. And then I had three stories to tell that could make up one larger story. So, um, so why not dream big? Why not? If, it, if it's such a privilege to write a book, that why not? really go for it every single time is my is my philosophy so uh yeah i knew from the start and um yeah and now i'm done so yeah so what inspires me when i'm writing um are, are different things i mean i uh each of these books actually for example has a theme song that it's not necessarily about the song it's nothing maybe in the lyrics but it's sort of the feeling of the song like knife is um a song by muse and Monsters of Men is a song by Radiohead, which is actually the epi epigraph in the book. And it's, um, it's sort of the feel of the song, the emotional pull of the song that I, uh, I want to try to recreate on the page. So uh, music is definitely an inspiration. I also, um, I run. I've run three marathons and I run, you know, all during the week. And when I run is actually when I get my best ideas. I think it's because it's kind of meditative and uh, I'm alone and uh, you know, breathing rhythmically. And it's just where the best ideas start to churn. And whenever people ask me about what should writers do, I think writers should always do something else besides writing as well, because uh, uh, it's it's a good to just to step back and have space to let ideas accumulate. And for me, that's um, that's running. So basically, running and music, um, which uh, neither of which are necessarily literary, but uh, but why not? But why not? You can put those feelings in a book. Uh, Monsters of Men. The title comes from quotes from the previous two books where characters tell each other that war makes monsters of men and so the monster in monsters of men really is war but I think that it's the biggest monster that men face um, humans face is slightly bigger than that I think that the hardest thing we ever face is the inability to see difference as just difference we either see it as something better than us in which case we need to pull it down or worse than us in which case we can exploit it we can't just see it as different it has to be better or worse and that is the thing that I think that has gotten us into so much trouble um, in history. I mean, that's, wars are based on that kind of misunderstanding, ethnic or religious or so on. And I think, I think that's the biggest monster, this a fear based on difference, that if it's different, it's a threat. And uh, I, think, I think that's our biggest monster, actually. Who's my favorite character? Gosh, that's a, that's a tough one. It's like kind of picking your favorite child. Uh, where, yeah, your parents do have a favorite child, they're just not telling you, everyone knows that that's true, they just don't say. Uh, I mean, I like, I kind of like, I mean, I, you know, I love Todd and Viola, and I love the way that their, their energy and their relationship, but my, my favorites tend to be um, people on the periphery. Uh, like, I like Wilf a lot. Um, Wilf just showed up one day on the page, and he's turned out to be really, really important as the books have gone on. And I like Wilf a lot, and the and Knife of Never Letting Go, I really like uh, Hildy a lot, uh, who is based on my late great aunt from Norway, um, who I really loved. And um, in the Monsters of Men, I think 
Uh, I don't want to give anything away, but there's a third narrator in Monsters of Men um, who I think really, really comes into his own. And uh, I really, probably, probably lately him, but no, I like everybody. <laughs>